Have you also experienced that with stepper motor controls? In open loop, the motor gets hot and resonates. But closed loop isn't an option because there's no encoder. Yeah, I know that problem. So what do you do then? Well, I take an encoder, attach it to the motor and use closed loop. Sounds pretty difficult. Well, yeah, it is. I need special tools. I have to adjust the encoder. I have to crimp and solder. So, yeah, it's tricky. That's why we've developed a new sensorless encoder. You don't need an encoder anymore, not even a cable. Everything is controlled by the software. Take a look at this. That's closed loop velocity mode. Hang on, Frank. That's a stepping motor. Yeah, exactly. We not only have it for brushless, we also have it for stepper motors now, and it works great for both. Okay, but there's an encoder cable attached. We don't need that. So can I... Yeah, you can cut it off. Yeah. That's fantastic. Cool. But how does it actually work, Frank? Well, Marcus, that's not so easy. You'll have to come over here and look. Show. Okay, Frank, can you keep it simple? Okay, wait a moment. Then look at this. We have a mathematical model in the motor's controller that is updated in each control cycle with the voltages and currents in the motor phases. Through the retroactive effect of the motor, also known as back EMF, the rotor position can be determined. The induced voltage isn't measured like the simple BLDC sensorless algorithms in a particular phase, but is calculated in this model. The more accurate the model, the parameters of the engine and resistance, inductance and magnetic flux, the better the estimate of the rotor position. So you see, it's not that difficult if you know how to do it. That's true. So does the new sensorless encoder have other advantages? Yes. Basically, the sensorless encoder knows the exact position and speed of the rotor at all times. And therefore, the control of the speed or positioning mode is much better. So that means that I can use a stepping motor in closed loop mode without an encoder? That's right. That is where the system switches between closed and open loop. Low speeds and standstill in open loop and at high speeds, you'll have the advantages of closed loop. Yeah, Frank, so where's the catch? It must be very difficult to set up, very complicated, lots of parameters, and it takes time. Well, we've developed an extra auto setup where you plug the motor in, and in no more than five seconds, all the parameters have been determined, and you're good to go. Five seconds? Yep, five I'll seconds. hold you to that. I'll get a motor, and we'll try. Okay. Ready? Five, four, three, two... And that's it. That was less than five seconds. Cool. And what about closed loop? Let's try. Okay. Okay. Take that off. And now let's give it some real speed. How fast is it now? That's 5,000 RPM. 5,000 RPM. And we can increase that. And just for you, we'll make it 10,000. 10,000 RPM. Amazing. Frank, you've convinced me. The next time I want to use closed loop and don't have an encoder, I'll use the sensorless encoder and make my life easier. Exactly. And you'll save time, too. Time to have lunch with me. Great idea. <laughs>